Aloha. What's up, Penn Nation? You're now listening to yet another edition of BJPenn.com Radio, the fighter's voice. As always, I'm your host, Jay Kinch, and we have another kick-ass show lined up for you guys tonight. Sorry that we missed you guys last week, but we're back this week with another great show, like I said, four awesome guests. We'll get to that in just a moment. But before we get into tonight's lineup, like I tell you guys every single week, you already know what's up. Your home for MMA news is BJPenn.com. BJPenn.com forward slash MMA news. We are your premier source for all things mixed martial arts. Our team is always hard at work to bring you guys the most reliable information, all the breaking news, tons of exclusive content, and so much more. Make sure you guys bookmark us, set up alerts, get notified when the breaking news comes out before everybody else sees it. And on top of all that exclusive content and all the breaking news, we've got a ton of tutorials that are coming out all the time from the good guys at Evolve MMA. Some of the best in the business, showing you some techniques, very cool stuff. All that and so much more. You guys know what's up. Everything you crave from the sport you love, BJPenn.com, the fighter's voice. We have got you covered, guys. So tonight's guest list, we kick things off with Platinum Mike Perry. Good friend of the show, but unfortunately, we caught up with uh, Mike before this fight with Yancey Medeiros was announced. So the conversation you'll hear will be with the assumption that he is looking at fighting Emil Mech. Obviously, we know that is not the case. Nonetheless, it's a great conversation. We talk about potential matchups moving forward for him, what went wrong in his past couple of fights, trying to recover from that two-fight skid. We talk about the McGregor situation, UFC 223, and a whole lot more. Always an awesome conversation with our boy Platinum Mike Perry. Second guest of the evening. Returning to the show, a gentleman that's competing this weekend, UFC Fight Night Atlantic City, taking on Chase Sherman, Big Pretty himself, Justin Willis. When you guys heard him on the show last time, he had an opponent, could not name that opponent. Obviously, that guy was Chase Sherman. We're going to break down the matchup against Chase. We're going to talk about Justin moving up in the division, taking on some of the elite. Great conversation with the guy. You guys have heard me talk about this a lot about. It was a great conversation with him. You guys have heard me talk a lot of good stuff about him. The story he has is so compelling and is so marketable. If he can continue winning, the sky's the limit for Justin. That is for damn sure. So we're going to break down the fight with Chase, discuss his ascension in the ranks, what he has planned for the rest of the year, and a whole lot more. Of course, big pretty style. You guys are going to want to hear that one as well. Third guest of the evening. It was announced last week that she'll be taking on Holly Holm in her highly anticipated UFC debut coming up at UFC 225 on June 9th in Chicago. Of course, I'm talking about Megan Anderson. Great conversation with Megan. We break down the fight with Holly Holm. We discuss the cyborg situation what's going on there, her title aspirations at the 145-pound division in the UFC. We talk about building that division, what the UFC should do to continue building up all these amazing female athletes. We talk about the Conor McGregor situation and a whole lot more. Again, very nice chat with her. I know you guys will enjoy that one as well. And closing out tonight's show, Hawaii's own UFC welterweight badass, all-around awesome guy, Yancey Medeiros. It's got to be my favorite conversation that we've had with Yancey. Of course, the fight was announced earlier this week that he'll be taking on Platinum Mike Perry at UFC 226, July 7th, International Fight Week in Las Vegas. We'll be breaking down that fight. We'll talk about him coming back from the loss to Cowboy Cerrone. We'll discuss the Diaz brothers, Conor McGregor, Max Holloway, the whole situation at UFC 223. Yancey moving on, becoming a better fighter, evolving as a martial artist. He's got some really funny Nick Diaz stories to tell you as well. Again, definitely my favorite conversation that we've had with Yancey to date. Another one you don't want to miss. All that and much more, BJPenn.com Radio, the fighter's voice. Let's jump right into it, guys. I'm your host, Jay Kench. We're going to kick things off tonight with Platinum Mike Perry. 
All right, Penn Nation, please welcome back to the show one of our favorite guests, UFC welterweight knockout artist, Platinum Mike Perry. Thanks for joining us again today, Mike. How is life in sunny Florida? Oh, it's beautiful, man. I'm about to take a trip to Miami and then take a little cruise through Mexico and the Bahamas and stuff. Sweet, so a little vacation time, a little break from training for you? I mean, yeah, I've I've been doing a little bit of training since the last fight, but mostly I've been on vacation. Well, you you got to enjoy life, man, and take advantage of the time off, right? Definitely. I worked hard to earn this time off. It's been a long time coming. I've been having a great time. Yeah, you've had a pretty busy 2017, that's for sure. So, uh, I, I well-deserved, I would say, in my opinion. Yeah, but I got to, you know, we got to get back to it here. And I want to fight again in a couple of months. So. Right, right. Well, you know, it's been a while since we've had you on the show and plenty to discuss, of course. But I guess let's start off with uh, before we get into the fight news. I know there's a couple of fights that interest you at this point. But before we do that, I wanted to ask you about all the chaos that happened last week and over the weekend. I know you put a, a couple of videos out online discussing McGregor and whatnot, the stuff with Khabib. But give us your give us your thoughts on the week as a whole and all the insanity that went on for UFC 223. Um, man, I gotta say, no such thing as bad publicity. You know, whatever whatever that guy seems to do is good for the rest of us. Uh, it's all about hyping up the sport and and whatever gets uh, fans over here. You know, I mean, WWE's got a lot of fans, but we're the ones... I mean, those guys are athletes and stuff, but there's, there's a lot of acting. And, uh, you know, I feel like we deserve the bigger crowd. Absolutely. I, I would agree with you. And obviously, you know, you mentioned wrestling, WrestleMania, Ronda Rousey's debut. That was a big deal. But uh, for me, man, it feels like, you know, regardless, you're talking about publicity, whether it be good or bad, it, it, it's good for everybody. Connor really did steal the show away from all the other fighters. Would you agree with that? Yeah, but the the damn card fell apart anyways. True, true. So, I mean, it was all. And then people still got to watch fights. And, you know, Joanna and Rose put on a, a good little fight. So, um, I mean, you can't be, I can't be upset. I'm ready. I'm uh, I'm looking to throw a dolly off of this cruise ship and see if I can make some headlines this weekend. <laughs> now I know you had said in one of your videos that if you tried to pull that kind of shit with a guy like you, you would have jumped out and put your hands on everybody. Definitely, definitely fighting. I'm definitely fighting. Now, what what, what do you make of uh, you know? I heard like Boss Rutan talk about this. What do you make of that whole crew thing? It, it sounds to me like. Boss had made this really good point that Connor's kind of in the same situation that Mike Tyson was at the height of his fame, surrounded by yes men that are going to go along with a bad idea if you come up with it. Hey, whatever pays the bills. <laughs> he, he's got a lot of people on payroll, I'm sure. Um, nobody's just hanging. Um, maybe he's got a few people hanging out, but I bet he's paying people. True, true. Definitely a lot of people on payroll. And what do you make of the situation with uh, with Kiesa filing the charges? Uh, Ray Borg said that, that he would be fine with an apology. What's your stance on that? You know, what would you do if you were taken off of the card, you know, from some shattered glass, if you were in that situation? Uh, Michael Kiesa's situation is definitely different than everyone else's. Um, the bus, you know, can't really sue anybody. Uh, UFC's not too upset with Connor except for the Michael Chiesa thing you know it's almost like sometimes the way stuff plays out in the UFC it's like people think that it was meant to happen and then so people think Connor was supposed to go there and do something crazy to get news going but he went too far and accidentally hurt someone. Well, 
I think it was just real, and he didn't care who was on the other side of that bus. So, I mean, Michael Chiesa, like I said, his situation is different. He's He's got no choice but to get some money for this. He's got to get some money for this because he lost out, and he didn't get to fight and compete. And, you know, it's a damn shame how it had to go down. Yeah, yeah, I definitely understand the, the, the situation with, with Chiesa, but... You know, there's talk that that maybe some of the other fighters, like say Pettis or, uh, you know, even uh, Alex Caceres. Do you think any of them have any reason to to get involved with uh with the legality of, of finances for the situation? Uh, I don't know about that one. I don't know, man. I mean, if there's legal reasons and they want to sue and get money that way. And- if I was one of them fighters, I'd just be like, yo, you owe me a fight. So right. I'd be trying to get Connor in the ring. Right, right. I'll drop all charges if you agree to if you agree to a fight. That that would be a smart move. Um but you know, you talked about it almost almost seeming like it was planned there. I would agree with you, man. As far as publicity goes, I know we just talked about it, but you can't get much better than that whether it was planned or not or real or not. I mean, at the end of the day, it put a ton of eyeballs on that card going into the weekend. Yeah, I mean, uh, what can I say? The whole the whole world's watching Connor now. He's like the most famous guy out there now. He kind of took Floyd Mayweather. Well, it's him and Floyd, man. How did he do it, man? How did he do that shit? Look, he's got ten UFC fights. He's nine and one. I'm four and three. I've had seven in a year and a half. I'm going to slow down now and try to, you know, pick my game plans as they come with my opponents a little slower, a little more, a little more educated. You know what I mean? I'm going to do my homework a little more and just don't just go off of my raw talent and abilities anymore. So, you know, damn, he just, he blew the hell up. He did his thing, man can't hate on that whatsoever and now he can do whatever the hell he wants well you know you talked about it there with uh maybe trying to slow down a little bit for yourself um it sounds to me like you're looking at this game instead of taking any fight that comes up and trying to fight as much as possible you're going to try to really think this thing out and, and and maybe not pick opponents but do what's best for you in your career moving forward now Ah, yeah, man. I mean, the goal is to be a world champion, and until I reach that goal, you know, I just, I'm not sure. Uh, I'm, and I'm also growing as a person too, not just a fighter. I'm growing as uh, a man, and like what I'm doing out here in the world, as far as um, other options, you know, entrepreneur type things. Uh, little deals and and products and i'm gonna try to get the doors open on some other things so so that money isn't the only reason i'm fighting yeah that makes it difficult right when money's the only motivation and i mean at the end of the day you are a prize fighter and and this is the business but uh when you're solely relying that as your income it's tough to not take fights as soon as they're offered yeah that's true i mean I doubt I would say no, though. If if the UFC right. calls and offers something, I'm going to be like, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> but they haven't called and offered. I tried to make some noise on a couple of fights, and I don't know if Sean Shelby's liking them, but he, I'm sure they like the noise. If any, You know, it's pretty cool that I can generate a little bit um, during the time of, of a card, uh, UFC 223 was going on and, and Connor did what he did and people were still, you know, tuning in to see what I had to say. So feels good, man. I've come a long way. I've taken some ass whoopings to get, uh, people to pay attention to my opinion in the sport of fighting and, and also to just, see who I am, how I'm living life like a normal person and happen to be a UFC fighter. Well, I'll tell you what, man, I think you've done a done a great job of marketing yourself and I think that you're you're very well loved by by the majority of MMA fans and for good reason. Uh, but you're talking about matchmaking there and for me, I think and I think for the UFC as well, 
guys making their own fights and, and generating interest, that makes their job a hell of a lot easier. So with that being said, it seems to me that you and Emil Mech had verbally agreed to a fight to throw down next. There's no news on that, though. Yeah, I, I don't think uh, the matchmakers were liking that fight. Maybe they want to give me a smaller name. Maybe um, they're like, oh, he doesn't deserve a name um, after losing to Max Griffin. You know, I, they gave me number 10, and I didn't win that one. But damn it, it was it could have gone either way. And, you know, I feel like every time I fight, it could go either way. But I'm always there. I'm the one that's putting the damn effort into the damn fight. Right. You're the one pushing forward, pushing the action, trying to make it exciting for the fans. That's just my style, though. So now I got to work on that. I got to... I got to play these points and be more patient. I believe I've said these things before, but I got to keep saying them and, and actually implement them. I mean, is, is that how I'm maybe not stressful, but frustrating. Is that frustrating for you for a guy that has a style that everybody loves? You should be a big asset to the company in that regard. I mean, does that bother you that you might have to change that style a bit to, to, to ensure that you're getting these wins? No, it just comes with the territory um, to be a winner, man, to, you know, not just be a fighter, but to be a winner, to be a, a better fighter and uh, and perform as well. You know what I'm saying? My style is going to stay with me. It's who I am as a person. Uh, I mean, a lot of it was taught, though. We were taught the way I was taught was ring generalship um you know if you press the action and and you move forward you know blood doesn't necessarily mean that and and i don't ever see all the damn points that they count anyways and see max griffin throwing 170 strikes i believe that's somewhere around the numbers that they were talking about and I don't think I threw 117 or something like that. You know what I mean? I'm, I feel like I threw like 10. And, you know, I missed eight of them. Might have hit them twice in the third. And it was I was catching them up. I was catching up to them. I was just getting started. My cardio was on point last fight. And, you know, so it's about putting it all together. Because uh, with Pons and Ibu, I didn't have cardio, but my... My mental game of fighting him was there, and I made a little mistake or two in the fight. And then with Max, my my cardio was there. My mind was strong, but like I didn't I didn't respect his fighting. I don't think I respected Ponzinibbio, so I was more attentive to moving my head the right ways and getting out of the way or max was just different i don't know i gotta analyze a lot of things or analyze less and just can work harder and do more yeah i remember you talking about that leading up to the ponzinibbio fight that you that you felt that your mental game was was at an all-time high and that you were feeling really good going into that one but it sounds to me like maybe there was a little lack of respect for the skills of max griffin does that sound accurate Definitely. I was just running into his... I mean, there's a video, uh, MMA Junkie or somebody did the week of the fight, and I was like, I'm just going to disrespect his offense, and I'm going to move forward no matter what he's doing. And I did that, and I ran forward right into his right hand a few times. Well, obviously a setback, but but again, I, I think you're a, you're a valuable valuable guy in the welterweight division, and... You know, speaking of moving forward, let, let, moving forward from there, what made you pick Emil Mick? Like, what, what interests you most about that guy? What made you want to fight him? Um, well, a lot of things, man. He's called me out, um, and he had a good fight with Kamara Usman, and uh, I, I actually, uh, a guy who trains with him in Sweden actually came to UFC Gym Winter Springs out here in Florida like a year ago or two and worked with me 
uh, I was training with him. Like he paid me and I did private lessons with him and he was a really nice guy. And, um, you know, we talked about fighting Emil back then. Cause I believe that's when he called me out back then. And also I think he's a little bigger 170 and, uh, striking wise, you know, bigger, a little slower than, than a skinnier, taller, lankier 170. So, uh, I just think stylistically, and he wants to stand and he wants to fight. So, I, you know, I think I'd outbox him. I think I'd, I'd move my head side to side and I'd catch him with those big hooks that I like to throw. So not only is it a stylistic thing, but, but a frame, you know, body type, all the, sounds like all in all, you felt like that this was a, this was a really good matchup for you. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, and, and he's got a little bit of buzz on, on social media. We got, like, the same amount of followers. He might have a little more. But uh, maybe it doesn't work because I asked for, like, a Vegas card, and, like, he's a Swedish fighter. He might have most of his fans over there. I know he does bet safe. I know I got a lot of fans in Europe already from the Danny Roberts fight. I mean, a lot of MMA fans are uh, – a lot of the big ones are Europeans, you know, um, American fans are really lacking, I think. Oh, I would agree with you, man. I think right now the majority of growth that we're seeing is in the the global markets outside of the U.S. I think we've come to, a, you know, maybe a, a standstill so far with American fans, maybe even a decline as well. But I would agree with you. And it sounds to me like maybe, maybe not Las Vegas, maybe that does not make the most sense to the UFC. Would you be willing to travel abroad if they offered you the, uh, the Emil fight? Uh, you know, say somewhere, somewhere in Europe at, this year. Of course, of course, I would. I'd take that fight. I was just, you know, I was just trying. I remember what happened last time I fought in Las Vegas. It was, that was a hell of a night. And then, uh, you know, I shocked a lot of people. I did, you know, so I just try to. I like coincidences, and I try to, I try to follow where the good auras are. Uh, you know, Europe had a good aura too, so I definitely go back to back to Europe. And you know, I fought here at home. I didn't really feel pressure, but fighting in other people's places, I think the being the underdog and stuff, and feeling the pressure against me, being booed, that stuff really helps me do better. Uh, a lot of people cheering for me and stuff. I feel like, you know, walking out to the fight or whatever, nerves-wise, my nerves, I was so empty. There was nothing. I It was like I was trying to feel nothing so that I wouldn't be nervous. Or or I just thought that I was just going to go out and I was going to perform well. And, and my timing was going to be on key and, and I was going to hit them and... That was going to be it. I figured Max was going to take shots, though. You know, I figured he'd be tough. So um, I didn't know when I was really going to put him out. But <clears throat> and then he just <clears throat> I couldn't couldn't get I couldn't land him on him. Couldn't land my hands on him. So I started to grapple. And then, you know, like I said, in the Ponzinibbio fight, I made a mistake or a couple. I made a mistake uh, with Max Griffin when I, I come out in the second round. and I, I take his back. And I jumped up there, or it might have been third round, damn it. Uh, you know, and and then, oh, man, I was winning the second round if I don't get dropped with the ring generalship based on how the, the stats should go. If I don't get dropped in that second round, I won that second round. I, oh, I whooped his ass in the third. I was on him in the third. He was getting tired of running. That pressure wears people out, you know, but I... I'm ready for 25 minutes, to be honest with you. But he already did enough damage where, I mean, fourth round, though, I was going to, I could have came out and I could have fought and I could have put it on him. So, you know, I don't really know what to say, but right. well, I'm well, having a good time and I'm going to get back to work here shortly and we're going to see what happens to the next motherfucker who signs that contract. <laughs> I have no doubt. Well, it, so it sounds to me, though, a bit like, you know, fighting in your own backyard, you kind of didn't have that pressure 
needed to, to maybe build up that adrenaline to go out there and perform the way that, that, that we've all gotten used to you performing? It kind of felt like I was going to go out there and spar, man. Oh, so it looked like too relaxed. Yeah, I guess so. I was a little too relaxed. I was comfortable. I thought I thought a comfortable fighter was a dangerous fighter, but I guess you know, for us, we got to be uncomfortable. That's what that's what got me in the UFC. I was broke and shit, and I wanted to change my life, and then I did that. And then I, once I did it, and I and I just stayed in the rhythm of training and and doing nothing else, and just training. And then I was like, all right, I got to figure something else out. So, really, I feel like I let Max whoop my ass because we all like to get fucked up. I've been out here getting fucked up since the fight. It's fun. I kind of let Max fuck me up because it's fun. (laughs) (laughs) I think you're one of very few guys that would say that, but I'm sure there are are plenty that would agree with you. Uh, However, though... Like I said, looking forward, you know, you're talking about you, you want somebody to sign this contract. Aside from, aside from Emil, you were one of the first guys to say that you wanted to welcome Nick Diaz back to the Octagon. That's another matchup I think fans would love. How do you think you guys match up uh, stylistically and, you know, given both of your styles, uh, you know, pressure forward, guys? I think that would be a really fun fight. Stylistically, let's go, man. I think his arms are too long. I think I move my head, I close the gap, and I hit him hard. Uh, he's not going to try to take me down. I'm not going to try to take him down. If he falls down, I'm not scared of his jujitsu. if I get on top and hover over him. Listen, I grapple with some of the best in the world. I am a mean fucking grappler. And, you know, I haven't... Um, I haven't had trouble... You haven't seen me have trouble with anybody except longer, rangy guys who run and poke me with the kicks or or a long long punch you know what i mean a point a point runner um you know the last points were a little more more devastating the right hand was landing and it cut me open you know but it is what it is i take the shots i got to i got to work on something and you know maybe they'll give me a grappler so I can show the world what I can do to one of them because if you, like I said, the Kobe Covington matchup is good too. But these guys are ranked up there higher, you know. Um, so I don't know if this is just like a popularity thing sometimes. And it's an honest thing because people know that when I get in there, I'm going to perform a fight. And we're going to fight. And you can right. be excited. So that's the job. But... My job is to win so so that I can rank up higher and fight the best guys, you know. So I don't know how it's going to go asking for what I'm asking for. That guy was out of out of the game for a little while, but George St. Pierre come back and fight for the title after four years off. I doubt, you know, they would, wouldn't do the same for someone like Nick Diaz. He would come in and fight top five guy. Um you know, what weight are we talking? Right. 185. If they offer that shit, I'd do it. <laughs> right. Well, I'll tell you what, man. I agree with you that coming back, he's probably going to want a big money fight. However, one thing you do have going for you, though, is we've heard Nick Diaz say many, many times, these guys aren't hitters. You ain't fighting any hitters. You're certainly a hitter, my friend. I think that uh, matchup-wise, this would be a fight that would interest him, you know, depending on the payday, of course. Yeah, you know, and he's not going to get a huge payday off of me. I don't got a million followers on Instagram. I got 70,000. So I got to break into the the hundreds of thousands and up there to the million one day, hopefully, you know. I'm trying to do it other ways than just with the fighting, just with the promoting and talking trash. I'm trying trying to do other things with, you know, some clothing and, and uh, the lifestyle of going out and having a good time, platinum parties and platinum productions and platinum promotions and everything, man. Platinum lifestyle, man, for life. Yeah, you know, you talked about having some some new projects outside of the cage. 
Uh, tell us a little a little bit about that. I mean, platinum parties. I mean, are you you gonna try to be an event coordinator or something? Or yeah, definitely. I I think I want to do something with that. Um, a buddy of mine set up my last two after parties uh, for the last fights that I had, and um, was speaking with another UFC fighter about maybe helping him out and. And setting up a little party for him. And, and um, you know, I want to get in on that. And the other night, a, f- a friend of mine had someone come down from New York. And, and I was going to take his friend out and show him a good time. Take him to a couple bars or something like that. So, if you want to come to Orlando and uh, you want to see a few places. You know, I went to Thailand. That's what those people do there. They make a living off of pulling up on their their little scooters and taking you to all the fun places or they'll tell you okay tomorrow all day taxi no problem you pay me i bring you everywhere you pay me this amount of money and so i mean that's a business that's a job and who doesn't want to party with me man (laughs) well based on based on what chris told me i think uh i think everybody would want to party with you brother uh, but no, that, that's a pretty cool angle to take in this game. You see a lot of fighters doing like the hunting tours thing. Why not, uh, you know, see the sights of Orlando or whatever the case is with platinum like Perry. I think that's a brilliant idea. Thanks, man. I'm trying. Hey, Hey, like I said, man, you got to monetize it however you can. So, uh, but listen, you've been more than generous with your time. I, I guess we should probably wrap this thing up. Uh, aside from Diaz and Mil Mech, Anybody out there that really makes sense for you for a matchup moving forward? Man, there's a ton of fighters, man. I still want to fight the Cowboy, but these are these are names. I don't know. I haven't been looking at the, the welterweight division. I haven't been studying. You know what I mean? I've been taking right. my mind off of the fighting, and I've just been... Like I said, I, I said a couple of couple of names and figured I might get one of them. And then I'll start training for that person. Hopefully I get the time. They usually give me two months. That's all I need. I need six weeks. Right. So regardless of who you end up fighting, what's 2018 looking like for you, man? I know you want to take some time off. You're going to enjoy this cruise. How many times you plan on fighting? And, you know, what do you think 2018 is going to look like at the end of the year for Platinum Mike Perry? Uh, man, well, I got in in 2016 late. I got in August. I fought three times in four months. Then had, um, I caused some issues with my management team, but then we worked that out. And I fought three times in 2017. And that damn December fight always comes back to haunt me now. I fought again this year, and the first time in my life I got two losses in a row. So, I mean, you can't you can't get up if you didn't fall down. So, I'm just looking forward to. Uh, I know that I'm gonna get another fight in the UFC. You know what I mean? Right. And I'm so confident in myself to do my best. Well, that that that's all you can be, man, and. Uh, like you just said there, I, I know, I remember Fedor after lo- losing a fight said, uh, the man who does not fall down cannot stand back up. So I would agree with you hundred percent, man. Greatly appreciate the time as always. I'm certainly looking forward to a fight being announced. Always a pleasure to watch you compete. One of the most exciting guys in the division and in the UFC. Anything you think we missed? Man. No, no, we got it. It was good to talk to you. Appreciate you and BJ Penn Radio. Uh, Man, I got to get out there to Hawaii at some point, but I think the vacation's over after this cruise, and it's it's time to go to work. I want to go. I'm going to go to New Mexico and train at Jackson Wing and check them out for a little bit. I don't know how long. I'm going to go check them out and see. And, uh, you know, who knows? I might do a camp there. You think that uh, obviously a lot of guys have gone to Jackson Wink to, uh, you know, further their game. Maybe it's a lot of guys you see hit a little skid in their career. 
they go over to to that camp. Uh, is that something you think would be a permanent move for you, or, or just to try it out? No, just to um, add add into things that I already have, knowledge I already have, because my team here is really a family. You know, Coach Julian, um, he's taught me so much. Coach Mark, he's taught me so much. Uh, you know, these guys. I wouldn't be where I am if it wasn't for those guys. And, you know, obviously you make changes in life and you move forward and people come, people go, you know, people, dogs die, everything, you know, something's there and then it's not. The whole thing with life is just coming and going and uh, going and fucking shit up and leaving. That's what life is about. You go, you fuck shit up, you leave. And you go do it again, and then someone comes and tries to fuck your shit up, and you don't let them. <laughs> Something like that, man. So, <laughs> you know, this is this is my home. This is my family here. But we can never really tell where life's going to take us. That's the damn truth. And and while you got to broaden horizons, it's always important to stay loyal and, and remember where you came from, so... Uh, listen, uh, again, man, I, I greatly appreciate the time. I really hope a fight gets announced soon, and I hope you have a great vacation. Enjoy your time on that cruise. Uh, hopefully we can catch up again once something gets announced. Uh, any shout-outs or any plugs you'd like to get in before we let you go? Man, Fit Meals for Life. My boy Dimitri always feeding me, keeping me on a good, healthy diet, even through all the drinking. There's no diet alcohol, but... I mean, tequila is pretty good for you. Uh, so <laughs> shout out, shout out to Fit Meals and uh, shout out to Fusion XL. That's the gym I train with, and and um, man, I I feel like there's oh, and shout out to Beard Gains, uh, a new a new co company I'm working with on. Um, we we got a little beard product. They got one coming out, and I'm gonna. I'm hoping to be one of the faces of it. I'm gonna grow my beard back out. You know, I met a girl who liked beard shaved, so I liked her, so I shaved it for a little bit. <laughs> so, are you gonna go? Are you gonna get it as big as possible? Or are you gonna keep it maintained, or what? Yeah, I'm gonna maintain it. You know, I'm gonna rock it. It's gonna be fresh. It's all about. I, I still gotta look good, man. I'm gonna look fly. I know how to take the beard and make it look right. Right, true, true, true. Don't don't want it uh, going too crazy, but all right, cool, man. That sounds like a great sponsor. I look forward to any uh, any deals you get going with them. That's that's definitely right up your alley. Uh, again, man, I hope you have a great vacation, and uh, hopefully we can catch up when you get back. Um, greatly appreciate the time, Mike. Always a pleasure to speak with you, my man. Thank you, brother. Good co- good talking to you. All right, have a good one, bro. Peace. Peace. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed the conversation with Platinum Mike Perry. Always a pleasure to have him on. Again, my apologies that we had this conversation with Platinum after the fact that the fight was announced against Yancey Medeiros. Otherwise, we would have discussed that in depth as well. However, nonetheless, cool convo with the guy. He is awesome. There's a reason fans love him. And we're definitely looking forward to this fight coming up for International Fight Week at UFC 226. But let's waste no time. We'll keep it moving. Second guest of the evening, Big Pretty himself, Justin Willis. This is BJPenn.com Radio, the fighter's voice. I'm your host, Jay Kinch. Coming up next, UFC heavyweight, Justin Willis. All right, Penn Nation, please welcome back to the show. UFC heavyweight prospect set to take on Chase Sherman in Atlantic City this weekend. Big Pretty himself, Justin Willis. What's going on, Justin? How are you enjoying Atlantic City so far? Oh, I love it, man. The king has taken a lay to the land already, and, uh, you know, it's a very interesting city. Uh, I like what I see. You know, uh, gentrification has not yet uh, infiltrated, but uh, <laughs> it's great. The, the neighborhood is great. The area is great. Love the energy. So the last time we spoke, you had mentioned that there was a fight in the works, but you couldn't divulge any details. Then a few days later, the news dropped that you'd be fighting Chase Sherman. Was he the original opponent you guys had in mind? Uh any opponent was in mind, you know. It was, it was honestly, it was just a, uh, it was whoever took whoever took the bait, I guess. Or I guess that, that's the right uh, word to say. Um, 
and uh, he did. We have the same management, so it was, it was more of an inside job, and uh, we got we got the deal done. Um, I'm after all the resources of first round management. Right, absolutely. That, that that's a beautiful thing where it doesn't have to go anywhere. It's all done in house, probably smooth sailing. So very good to hear. But you know, you're just telling me you're you're enjoying the, the a little bit of relaxation right now. How is camp been so far? All the hard work's done. How are you feeling going into Saturday? Oh, I feel excellent, man. Um, it, it's 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 crazy because um, every day uh, my life is just dedicated to fighting. You know, twenty four seven, three sixty five. Um, so it's really good. The, these times, this is when I actually can have fun. Right. Because, uh, every, every day I, I put myself through, you know, a figurative hell in order to reach that light. And, uh, you know, and, uh, when the bright lights turn on, I will, I will show up and I will perform to the best of my ability, which is greatness. Now, are you a guy that cuts to make 265? And if so, how is that weight cut going? Uh, uh, I only cut maximum seven pounds, so okay. um, it's, it's not it's not even really a cut, you know. It's more so I just uh, don't divulge on carbs a few days, and uh, it, it just uh, don't eat after a certain time. So it's 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 really simple, uh, not, nothing too complicated, nothing like it used to be before I had resources. Um, it's actually pretty pleasant. Yeah, that that's the beauty of being a heavyweight or a, or a pretty weight, as you would say. There you go, baby. <laughs> So give us your thoughts on Chase, man. How do you think you guys match up stylistically? Um, first of all, I'd like to say I respect all my opponents, you know, because, um, you know, it takes bravery. And especially it takes bravery to sound out line against a killer like myself. Um, so uh, you, you got to respect the man. Uh, stylistically, uh, what does he have to offer? I mean, all these guys have something to offer, but in all honesty and in all humbleness, it's just not enough. It doesn't matter what he comes with. It's just not going to be enough. And um, when, when we get in that cage, he's going to realize that really, really quick. We, you know, I, I saw him um, yesterday or the day before, and, you know, they were, you know I, I had a conversation with him. <laughs> and uh, the UFC threatened to call security. And, you know, I want to say, you know, um, in a few days, security won't be there to help him. So really, you guys had a bit of an altercation, or you're saying conversation? Uh, I mean, you were know, you just I trying just to talk to the words, guy? You know, I, just, uh, I, I want to say hi to him. Oh, okay. So getting that little bit of uh, mental warfare going early. Uh, it, it's, it, it is what it, I mean, whatever you want to call it. You know, I, I just grew up in this. These guys are going to realize really quick. This, I'm talking about. I lived in this. Right. You know, this is not. This is not a sport. This is not. To me, this is a lifestyle. This is my life. And I'm willing to take another's life in that cage in order to protect mine. Now, so he has, to under, he has to understand the entity and the person he's fighting. And I just don't, I, I think, just by his reactions, I think he thinks this is a fucking game. And if he thinks it's a game, he's going to fuck around and get played. And he will get played. Now, it, it, it got heated to the point that UFC officials had to break you guys up? Oh, no, they, 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 they you know, I, I just wanted some tea. <laughs> so, uh... <laughs> You know, the team machine was there, and I was uh, having a few words of, uh, you know, encouragement for him, you dig? Right, right. Well, interestingly enough, you know, you're talking about being respectful to your opponents and, and all of that, but on MMA Junkie Radio last week, he had said that he wasn't too impressed by you, and he thinks that you won't be able to match his pace. What's your response to that? Turn on a film. That's ridiculous. That's, 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 a, that's a person that's uh, trying to pep themselves up. I mean, just turn on a film. And the film never lies. Only the individual lies. And I, I, I don't know. I mean, I don't know if you guys doesn't understand but my IQ. My IQ. I mean, come on, man. That's a, that's that's an insult to my intelligence, and uh, and it's, it also shows me the level of his, of his intelligence. So, um, only thing I do, like I said, man, turn on the film. Right. That's it. Right. The tape doesn't lie, man. The tape doesn't lie. It That's does for sure. It does not lie. I mean, I, I mean, the fights that I have seen. I mean, come on, man. I'm, I'm like, I'm not going to say, and and put him, uh, talk him down like you tried to talk to me because you know, like I said, man, it takes a brave man to sound out of line with me. But you know, um, it is what it is, and reality is reality. That's all. That's that. that that's the only thing I care about is reality, and you know, and the reality is he can talk all he wants to, but those gate doors are going to close and he's going to be stuck in there with me <laughs> right right that's a reality now speaking of this reality you know the reality for him going into this fight 
He's two and three in his last five outings. You know, that being said, do you think he's got his back against the wall here? And will that affect how he approaches this fight with you? I mean, honestly, I never put too much onus on record. Record doesn't really dictate anything. The only thing that it really dictates is a person's, um, I guess, thirst. And um, so um, if he comes out hard, that's not his style. So and if he comes out slow, that goes to my style. So like, like, like that's one of those things where he's in the conundrum right now. You know, I, I'm sure he's gonna have to look up that word. Okay, <laughs> but but that but that's that's what he's in. He's in a conundrum. <laughs> I mean, so so this is a game of chess, man. And I'm already five moves ahead, and he just doesn't realize it yet. But when, he, like I said again, when he gets locked in that cage, he's gonna realize it real quick. Well, I know that the last time we talked, you know, you were you were discussing how you feel you were already ready for the title, and you have a ton of confidence in this game, or not? You don't even take it a game as a game. This is life for you. Uh, but I'm wondering, and you know, you talked about how the rankings might not necessarily matter, but at the end of the day, does a big win over Chase on Saturday, does that put you, put you into the position for a, a guy in the top 15? You know, um, <laughs> I don't give a damn who's next. Number one, you know, after I'm done with uh, Mr. Sherman, um, the next guy's going to have to volunteer his life as well. So, you know, I, I don't care about no rankings. Like, I'm not in it for that, man. I'm only in it for one reason. And that's to get this built, and that's that, and that's in order to build a legacy, so that these little kids that grow up like me are similar to me know that there's a chance. That's it. I fight for too much, and I I I just don't think he realizes what he's fighting, and and that's okay. He could talk himself up. His coaches can talk himself up, but I'm gonna go ahead and deflate him in a few days. So, I mean, it sounds to me, man, like you've got this mentality of. They line them up, you knock them down, and eventually, regardless of rank and opponent, you're going to get that title shot. God is great, brother. Right, right on, man, right on. Well, you know, you're talking about your story, your legacy there. Uh, we had also discussed, you know, building your brand and how you have a really compelling story, you know, combined with a ton of personality, both great, great assets, uh, you know, when it comes to promotion in this sport. Uh, Chase has a decent following online, and, and a lot of hardcore fans seem to really like him. Uh, do you expect to gain a lot of that recognition from the MMA community after a big win on Saturday? It's, um, like I say to all these guys, man, after this fight, his fans will be my fans. Right. Right. So you can kind of steal that momentum. I, I don't know if you call it stealing. Um, I, 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 do you call it stealing when a, when a king goes and conquers another, another village? True. Really true. Stealing? Conquest is conquest. I know what you're saying. There you, there you go, my brother. So. You know, like I said, man, uh, uh, fans don't matter, followers don't matter, nothing. I don't. This is not the light game. This is the fight game. You know, so if, if nobody liked me, I would not care. Right. This is this is a fight. Well, I I know last time we talked, you know, when you were telling me your story, I was so blown away about you know the upbringing, the 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 time in the foster homes and all that stuff, and I think that. Uh, given some more exposure, I mean, you have all that potential, as we talked about before, to have that, to be a big superstar in this sport, uh, again, with a compelling story like that. Do you think that, uh, you know, maybe after a couple more fights, you'll start to get that push from the promotion, uh, you know, to kind of get behind this really compelling story that you have in life? You know, I, you know, I, I kind of put a little bit of thought in that. And, you know, my conclusion is I don't give a fuck what they do. You know, like, only thing I can do is worry about myself and worry about winning these fights right. and worry about outworking everybody. Like, 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 I, I, it's really not a part of my nature to really worry about other people because I'm talking about in, like, in, like, a, a, a thought process of, you know, we come out like, uh, uh, I'm going to give you something. I want to give you this. I, I didn't grow up people giving me shit. Right. So I'm not going to stop now and wait for somebody to give me something. Are right, you going to go out there this and take it? This is a conquest, man. Life is a conquest. Right. That's it. So, if whatever they, you know, and, and honestly, it even if they gave me promotion, it wouldn't be them giving me anything. Right, you would have came in and taken it and earned it all along the way. You, you understand? So, we have to change the perspective, the very perspective. Yeah, no, you make a great point, man. It's just, you know, for me and, and, and this this sport being all about personalities and characters and, uh, 
I, like I said, man, I mean, I think your story is one that could, that could be very big. Like you said, you want to, you know, go out there and, and, and be that kind of role model for all the people that have gone through something similar, all the kids out there to show them, uh, that there is much more possible in life than they might think. So, uh, I just think that from a promotional standpoint for the UFC, I think they'd be crazy to not get behind your story and, and try to give you a big push, you know? Yeah. You know, and I, I, that's just their choice, man. So, um, Hopefully they'll make the right decision, and uh, and the, but the decision is theirs when it comes to you know who they decide to put in front of the camera. But um, I I know my time to shine is in a few days, so and I cannot be denied that day. Right, right. So any anything besides those days, you know, I let them work it out, man. The, all the analytics and the, and all all that all that BS that's on them. Right, you're just there to do work, put in that work, and and get the job done. Um, that's it, sir. So listen, changing gears here for a moment, the new season of Tough, that's going to premiere tonight. I know obviously you're picking your teammate Daniel Cormier to beat Stipe, but how do you think the season's going to go uh, in regards to coaching? Do you think DC is going to be the superior coach when it's all said and done? Oh, you know, I, I don't know Stipe, you know, so it's hard for me to speak on Stipe um, when it comes to his coaching abilities, but um, I do know um, Daniel, uh, DC, and uh, he's a great coach. Um you know, he has a lot to offer to this sport, and um, I'm happy that he got this opportunity, and I know he that he's going to capitalize on it to his best ability, which is also greatness. For sure, for sure. Very cool stuff. Uh, definitely an awesome fight. I know everybody got super excited when that one got announced, but, you know, speaking of coaching, uh, I believe it was yesterday, the day before, some news broke that he's going to be a head coach of a high school wrestling team in North Carolina. Pretty cool stuff from the champ by doing this, and, you know, no, just... No, 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 California, you know, it's one of the top. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, it was oh, okay. Oh, it was yeah. Northern California. It's, it's, okay. Yeah, yeah. It's one of the top uh, wrestling schools, actually, in the country. You know, Gilroy High School. So um, that's a that's an awesome opportunity for him, and I'm happy for him. You know, it's, I'm glad you said that too, because somebody, I guess, in the headline, it had said North California, and I'm thinking, yeah. why would he go to North Carolina to, to coach? <laughs> that's got to be a pain in the ass, but. Uh, you know, it just further lends itself to him being a great person, but I'm wondering how much of a benefit has it been for you and your career to be around him in the gym for all these years? And would you consider him a mentor to you at all? You know, um, I don't have idols. Um, I don't have, uh, mentors when it comes to, you know, that aspect. My, my last mentor was my, my late father. Um, my only idol is Yahweh, you know? So, um, I, I don't really put too much onus on under, I'm, I'm telling you man I grew up differently I tick differently and now it's all clicked so what happens is when an individual grows up like I grow up the first thing that they have to do is beat themselves in a positive right conquer self conquer all because especially being a young black man in America they mount all these stereotypes on your shoulders and you have to beat them because if not, you will be swallowed alive. I don't have handlers. I don't have yes men. I don't have people. N- none of that. Right. Well, you, you've you've learned that you have to rise above it all from from a young age. And I think that, you know. Obviously, we talked about the confidence factor there, but uh, it's like that indomitable spirit that I think that you have that 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 is clearly one of the biggest assets to your game. Not only your skills as a martial artist, but just that mental fortitude that you have going into these fights, man. It's very going to be very tough to beat. God is great, brother. And, um, you know, um, that, that comes with a lot of nights of, of, of utter, um, uh, misery, a lot of days of utter misery and having to climb out of that. And a lot of these guys just don't realize what the fuck they're fighting. Right, well, but you're now they are forged in fire, man. Undoubtedly. All right, well, listen, Justin, more than generous with your time as always. I just got a couple, couple more questions here for you. Y- yes, sir. Uh, getting back to Saturday, you're on the main card in a great position for more exposure. How excited are you to go out there and put on an awesome show for the fans in Jersey? Um, I love the fans, man. So um, I'm gonna go out there and I'm gonna put on a show. Um, you know, first and foremost for God. Secondly, for my family. Third, for uh, just myself. And fourth, for the fans, you know. So I got to be honest. Right. I do this for God, first and foremost, and my family. And, you know, there's so many other things. Because, you know, uh, when you start doing it for 
a whole bunch of other people, then you know you kind of get lost in the sauce. That's true. It's a it's a it's a personal journey for, first and foremost, right? Yeah. So a lot of these guys are lying to these people, right? <laughs> you know, so uh, for likes and shit, man. Yeah, no, well, hey, man, I, I think that kind of honesty is something that the sport needs, so I... I, I Welcome uh, to the real, brother. <laughs> right, for sure, for sure. So, uh, without looking past Chase Chase at all here, though, what's next after this win? I know you said that, you know, it's up to whoever wants to volunteer their life to sign the dotted line, but do you have any opponents in mind or fight cards in mind that you'd like to be a part of? Uh, four months. So, you know, um, I think, you know, after this next fight will be my last fight fighting every four months, you know? Because then it's going to be time to start, you know, really uh, going to two times a year, or, you know, one time. A, you get what I'm saying? Right. Um, you know, to, you know, really fighting, really fighting for that bacon and really fighting for, you know, my legacy and really fighting for, you know, uh, to get to get to my destiny. So, you know, then it's going to be more time to prepare, more time to sharpen my tools, more time to, you know, to, to, to really build. That's next. Well, I, like I said, man, I, I think you have all the all the potential to, to be a huge, huge name in this sport, and I certainly hope that, that all this momentum continues to build and we get to see just that. But in conclusion, man, give us the big, pretty prediction for the fight, and how do you visualize it all playing out? You know, um, whenever he wants to tap out or, 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 or get out of there, he'll find a way out. Believe me. So I'm I'm not going to put any predictions on it. Only thing I predict is an ass whooping. <laughs> All right, That's man. It. I have no doubt. Listen, we greatly appreciate the time today, Justin. Uh, I know fight week can be hectic. Like I said, I I've greatly greatly appreciate it. Looking forward to the fight on Saturday. Your continued rise in the division. Any shout outs or plugs you'd like to get in before we let you go? Uh, yeah, go follow me at Big Pretty MMA on Instagram and Twitter, and um, uh, a prettier you on Instagram. And, um, yeah, thank you for all, everybody out there who supports me, who believes, um, and, and everybody out there who people say that you cannot, Big Pretty says that you can. God bless. All right. God bless, brother. Great conversation as always. Best of luck on Saturday, and hopefully we can catch up after a dominant hey, hey, win. Hey, 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 let, let's stop with that luck stuff. I know you it. Know, I know luck, it. <laughs> hey, 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 luck is something that a person like myself who works, who has overcome, um, I don't depend on luck. I do not. I do not. So everybody out there, don't wish don't wish me luck. Just pray for me. You got it, brother. God bless Thank my you. man. Greatly appreciate it. All right, bye right, bye. All right, later. Again, I can't say enough about Justin Willis. This guy's story is incredible. If he can continue to win and compete at this high level, the sky is the limit for him. And that story is so compelling and so inspirational that the UFC could really, really make him into a superstar. Very much looking forward to the fight with Chase Sherman this weekend. Make sure you guys tune in for that one. It's guaranteed not to go the distance. That's for damn sure. And make sure you guys check him out. Doesn't have nearly as many Twitter followers as he should have, but like you heard, he's not in it for that. This is not a business for him. This is not a game. This is life. So again, big thank you to Justin. Great convo with him. I can't say enough about the guy. But we're going to keep it moving like we always do. This is BJPenn.com Radio, the fighter's voice. I'm your host, Jay Kinch. Coming up next, our third guest of the evening, Megan Anderson. All right, Penn Nation, please welcome back to the show one of the baddest women on the planet who is finally making her highly anticipated UFC debut in Chicago on June 9th against Holly Holm, the one and only Megan Anderson. Thanks for joining us again today, Megan. Uh, How was life in Kansas City this afternoon? Uh, Life is is cold. It's uh, it's, the weather's a bit bipolar here at the moment. I can relate. You know, uh, I'm East Coast. I'm from Rhode Island, and it seems like it's either a beautiful spring day or it's raining and possibly snowing. Yep, it sounds about right. (laughs) Right. Spring spring is never going to come. That's what I've determined. I, I'm I'm hoping it comes because I'm so over this weather. I just want it to be warm and sunny, not with a chance of snow. Right. <laughs> so listen, we'll jump right into it. This fight was announced last week, and everybody knows, anybody that knows this sport uh, is really excited about this matchup. How happy are you to finally get past all the hurdles 
and have a contract signed to make this highly anticipated UFC debut? Oh, I'm definitely excited, and I think anyone would in this position. Um, you know, everyone always loves to have that, finally get that, I guess, UFC debut fight, and, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just, you know, ecstatic that I'm able to do it on such an amazing card that UFC 225 is, and on such a, uh, you know, against such a you know, high-caliber athlete that Holly is. Now, how frustrating has it been to be sidelined for all this time? And on the flip side of that, I'd imagine there was a big feeling of relief when this when this deal was finally done. Oh, definitely. Um, the last kind of, you know, however long it's been, it's definitely been difficult. I've learned, definitely learned a lot about myself um, through this process. Um, and like you said, it's, it's huge relief finally getting this, this fight and finally being able to get back in the cage. Now, you had mentioned uh, earlier in the week that the UFC had given you some dates, but they hadn't given you an opponent until last Tuesday. Were you uh, at a point where the opponent didn't matter? Yes. Um, you know, me and my team, we've been preparing for this moment, and it literally was just like, look, we don't care who it is. Just, just give us someone. Right, right. Now, obviously, the fight against Cyborg was was what everybody was expecting for your debut, but Holly is another great opponent with a big name, as you mentioned, very high-caliber athlete. Give us your thoughts on Holly and how you guys match up stylistically. Um, I think Holly's a great athlete. She's done a lot for this sport. Um, she's very athletic. Um, she's strong. Um, she's got great striking. and you know, I feel like I match up really well with her. You know, I'm, I'm very aggressive with my, with my striking style. I have a lot of power. I'm very long. I fight long, so I feel like this is a great matchup for me. Now, I know you said that, that you're looking forward to getting exposure with the mainstream fans here in the States, and you know some would even argue that because of Holly's win over Ronda Rousey, she presents an even better opportunity for you to get that kind of exposure than maybe a fight with Chris would. Uh, would you agree with that at all? Yeah, I, I guess like a lot of people, a lot a lot of people know who Holly Holm is uh, due to the the Ronda fight. Um, so I feel like it is a great opportunity for me to to show everyone my skills and what I'm about, and uh, you know, kind of you know propel myself to that to that top stage. Now th- there was talk of Holly going back down to 135 after her loss to Cyborg. Are you surprised that she decided to remain at featherweight? Um, I actually seen an article, and I think it was her management team that come out and said that she uh, didn't want to drop to 35. She wanted to stay at 145, and she was looking to get back in the cage like May, June. Um, so I, uh, I assumed she was going to stay at 145, but you never know. Right. Right. Uh, well, a lot of options for, for people that can move between the weights, but for someone like yourself that, you know, 145 is, is the division, you know, considering the lack of, the lack of depth at the moment, uh, do you think she's kind of needed at 145 at, at this point in time? Well, um, I would love for the UFC to start signing more featherweights. Um, you know, you, you have to build a division somehow. Uh, let, let's, you know, why not you just sign all the featherweights that they have in Invicta right now? Um, and, you know, build from there. Um, you know, divisions aren't built overnight. So, you know, it's, and let's let's have like a, a slow, steady intake of, of featherweights. Um, but for right now, as people like Holly, I know Kat Zingano is a bigger girl. She's looked at, you know, wanting to fight at 145. There's a few other girls that um, – are interested in that. So for right now in the UFC scene for the featherweight division, they're kind of important. Right, right. Now on Monday with uh, Helwani, you were imploring the UFC to get behind the division, build it up. As you just said, you want them to sign as many featherweights as possible. Uh, why do you think they've been neglecting the, the women's featherweight division? You know, is there, it's not like there's a lack of high level competitors out there and, or are they solely focused on building this around Chris? I honestly don't know. I, I wish I had the answer to that question, but I don't. Um, all I can do and all I can control is, uh, you know, being a great model for the division um, and just, you know, any opportunity I can get to start, you know, let's, let's promote 
finding other featherweights because at the end of the day, like a division isn't just solely made up of a few people. Um, in every division, you need to have like the kind of the bottom level, the middle tier, and the top tier. And you know that's that's how you work your way up into the position that I am in. You know, I was at the bottom and I worked my way up. Um, and you, every division needs that. So whether there may be more middle of the road fighters than top, like that's. Like, what, there's nothing wrong with that because the only way that they can get to that top level is by fighting, fighting up, um, right. is, is taking those opportunities. So uh, I just I just wish that they would back it and, you know, who knows what will happen in the next year or so. Well, I'll tell you what, it sounds to me like, uh, obviously, you feel like you would be a, a great advocate and ambassador for this weight class. Is that something you kind of look at doing, uh, you know, going forward with the promotion? Yeah, um, definitely. I feel like, you know, at, and at the end of the day, it's uh, MMA is a very, like, uh, it's a very, I guess you would call it like a selfish sport. So I, like, I understand that there's a, you know, a lot of people want to promote themselves and stuff like that. But I feel like in the position that I'm in, in the division that I'm in, I feel like I could be a really good advocate to start helping, uh, looking at people to sign um, in the division. You know, I, I feel like um, I have a lot of what the UFC likes. I'm marketable. I feel like I can talk well. I might have a funny accent. <laughs> but, um, and, you know, I feel like I put on great performances. And, you know, I, I want to use that to help the division. Because without a division, like what, who, you know, we can't just keep going through the same few fighters, you know, every six months. We need new people. We need new blood. And, you know, that's how I got here. For sure, for sure. And and I got to say, I commend you for, for being willing to kind of take that position. I think a lot of fighters would be, you know, mostly focused on themselves and the, the opportunities that they can get. But it seems like you 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 obviously see the bigger picture here that uh, everybody kind of needs to work together to build this thing up and, and have more opportunities for, for ladies in MMA. Yeah, definitely. And, and, you know, I'm not just talking about the featherweight division. Like, let's, you know, this is for any division, um, you know. The UFC currently doesn't have an atom weight, atom weight division, and I know a lot of people uh, who don't don't watch Invicta don't know that there is an atom weight division, and there is like there is a lot of high caliber athletes at 105 pounds. Um, so why not give them an opportunity as well to be on that stage? You know, um, I feel like this is like a movement for for like. I guess you could say like gender equality, like let's let's build up more women so that you can have amazing uh, an amazing roster. Uh, featherweights, we uh, some of the hardest hitting women in the in the MMA. You know, we're, we're as as big as guys. We hit the same as guys, and there's a lot of knockouts and a lot of finishes. You know, that's an exciting division. Why not like why not get behind it and start signing more people? You know. Absolutely, and I think that anybody that knows this sport knows damn well that the women's fights almost always deliver, you know, crowd pleasing performances on both both ends of it. Um, but you know, I agree with you 100. percent the The atom weight division, not only in Invicta but across the globe, there are definitely some big stars with a lot of potential. So it'd be crazy well, not to open up that weight. Yeah, Angela Lee. Yeah, Angela Lee has, Lee. yeah like, right. Some amazing. Uh, was it Andrea Lee? She's yeah. There. Yeah. She's the champion. I just. They're phenomenal athletes, and I find it exciting watching them fight because, like, you know, I've seen people like Ginny Fry knock people out with head kicks at 105 pounds. Like, right. <laughs> um, you know, it's exciting. Um, so, I, you know, I just, I just hope that one day we can see all divisions, all weight divisions, uh, stacked in the UFC. I I agree with you 100, percent and I think that. Again, you'd be uh, you'd be a great advocate for doing so. So I certainly hope that that opportunity presents itself, uh, and that that you're able to do that. But um, you know, getting back to this whole situation with uh, Chris Cyborg, it's very well documented that that fight has been on the horizon for a while now. I know you said that that you would hope to get that fight with a win over Holly, but with the win over Holly, nothing else would really make sense at this point, right? Yes, I I guess I would agree with you as uh, um, I would love to fight Chris and you know like I said earlier 
Um, I didn't know who I was fighting. They would given me a few dates, so we didn't know if they were going to come back with Chris. No, we were hoping it was Chris. We were prepared for them to come back with Chris. But, uh, you know, they, they came to us with Holly. And, you know, I'm not really in a position to demand, right. um, you know, who I fight. Like, I'm not really – I'm not a superstar. I'm not at that level. Not yet. I haven't yet. even fought in the UFC. So, you know, I kind of – I don't have that kind of power despite what people think. Um, but I I feel like – you know, depending on if the UFC wants to match a Nunez Chris Cyborg fight, I feel like I should get the next shot. Absolutely. If I, uh, pending on June ninth, but I'm hoping to get my hand raised. <laughs> <laughs> of course, of course. You know, speaking of which, how important is it for you to really make a statement against Holly? You know, I feel like if you were to be more dominant than than Chris was against her, that would be a huge deal for you. Definitely, um, definitely, and. Uh, you know, it's a fight. Anything can happen, but you know, we're preparing for everything. You know, we're working on on our game plan. We're working on my strengths and, and what I'm good at, and, and capitalizing on those points. And um, I just uh, and for me, it's not really about making a statement. I just want to go out there and and fight a better fight than I did the last time. I want to be a better martial artist than the last time I entered the cage. And you know, I guess that's that's and and have fun. I guess that's what it's really all about. Because it's it's unless you're not having fun, then why are we doing this? You know. Right, right. Uh, get out there, have fun, enjoy what you're doing, and showcase your evolution as a martial artist. Yes, exactly. Yeah. True, true. Now, what did you take away from their fight? I mean, did you see a lot of things that you could maybe capitalize on a fight against uh, either one of them? Um, I thought both ladies put in an amazing performance. I think I think they both uh, executed their relative game plans, um, and you know I've seen good things from both ladies. And you know I, you know uh, Holly, there's a lot of footage on Holly, um, so you know we're looking at that and and looking at tendencies and stuff that she she likes to do. And you know the, the same thing would happen if we're game planning for Chris. Um, we know my strengths, um, and it's not really about gaming, game planning for somebody else. It's more of like, what do I do well that is going to beat, you know, opponent, my opponent, no matter who it is. Right, right. You can't think too much about what they're going to do. You have to focus on what you're going to do and what you're going to accomplish uh, once you get out there. Uh, but yeah. listen, ch- changing gears here for a moment. Tell us about the analyst work that you've been doing with the uh, Aussie and Fancy Breakdown. Uh, is, is that something that you're that you're doing for fun, or do you feel like you really have a future uh, doing analyst work? Um, I guess kind of both. Um, we kind of started it to like just fill the time, um, and I feel like people like to, you know, a lot of people just like, oh, you should put photos up and all this kind of stuff, and. We just wanted it to be super casual, super fun, laid back. Um, and I feel like we, we kind of, like, we have a really good chemistry and we kind of, like, give that kind of cool, laid back vibe off, uh, you know, through our breakdowns. But um, I feel like people are just really interested to see, like, fighters, like, analyzing other fighters, you know. Um, I know a lot of people don't necessarily, like, talk about, like, who they, you know, about fighters or, like, um, you know, go really go into depth. So, like, we kind of wanted to do something like that. And, you know, I would love to get into, you know, anal- analyst work or that kind of stuff down the line. And, you know, I think it's it's a great way to, to practice learning a lot of these fighters and uh, being able to break down people and analyze people and all this kind of stuff. So I I, I like it. It's, it's great. And, you know, Laura, Laura and I are really good friends, so... It helps. <laughs> right. Well, I'm wondering, has doing these breakdowns, has that been beneficial for your own game at all? Um, I've always been uh, very analytical when I watch fights. Um, so it's. I guess it's just, I just verbalize it now. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, student of the game, that, that is for sure. Uh, but listen, I, I wanted to put you on the spot here. Can you give us a breakdown of Conor McGregor versus the bus? <laughs> no, but seriously, Every, seriously, everyone though, everyone gets the dolly. <laughs> <right>. <laughs> seriously, though, as a professional athlete, what did you make of all that craziness? 
I, I don't know. Um, I think that I honestly feel like Connor thinks he's untouchable, and um, that's a scary notion. Um, if 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 it was just Khabib, like I understand his motives behind it, you know, Khabib seem kind of cornered Artem, and you know that kind of stuff. And if it was just Khabib, uh, Khabib's team on the bus, like I'm not saying I agree with it because I think both parties are wrong to do that. Um, like it, if I feel like it would have been less, but the fact that he did this to a bus full of fighters and had three fights pulled out because of it um, is ridiculous. Um, this It's not everything is about Connor. Uh, there are other fighters trying to make money. There are other fighters trying to, you know, you know, do what they love, and, and he's potentially taking that away from some people, you know, and I just don't think that that's okay. And I am worried that he, there is no, there's going to be no consequences for his actions. And he's just going to continue doing the same things. It could get worse. Who knows? But I worry that fighters coming up through the ranks see that he's not punished and think that it's okay for them to do the same thing to be able to get attention. Right. And, you know, you, you kind of segue into my next question here perfectly. You know, when you see that kind of publicity and promotion, if that's what you want to call it, you know, is it all discouraging for you to see that that's how – Big headlines are getting generated in the sport these days. Yeah, it's, you know, at, at the end of the day, like, all I can control is me. Right. So um, I am just focused on, like, being respectful, you know, uh, not do, throwing a dolly through a bus. <laughs> you, know? <laughs> right. um, you know, just just being what a martial artist is supposed to be. It, you know, and not getting caught up into the, the crazy trash talk, the crazy dramatics, the crazy aggressive, you know, conference, like, you know, at the conference, like, trying to fight each other. Like, that's just not me. Um, and I would rather, I would rather have people see my fighting do the talking for me than my, I guess, silly actions out of the cage. Like, I would rather be remembered for my fighting than throwing a dolly through a bus. Right. And, you know, I, I talk about it a lot on this show, but it's like kind of a catch-22 for people in media. It's like, yeah, those big headlines generate revenue, and, and, and you know, that kind of controversy is what people seem to feed off of these days. But at the same time, having having watched the sport for so long, I really do miss, miss that Bushido code and honor among opponents and, you know, the real martial way about all this, so... Yeah. Um, I well, wish we could get back to that somehow. Yeah, well, like, uh, it, it is still here. There are a lot of fighters that that have the same values, that respect their opponents, like, they don't trash talk or anything. It's just there, is, I guess there is just a select few that feel it necessary to take it that step too far. Um, but, like, uh, for example, look at uh, Raquel Pennington and Amanda Nunez. Like, there is no animosity between them. There is no trash talking. Um, it, it's all professional. It's all respectful. And despite, you know, being, you know, good friends or whatever, out of the cage, they know that when they get in the cage, they're going to fight and someone's going to win, someone's going to lose. Like, and there is no animosity. I love that. Um, there is no need to, there is no need to do anything else, I feel. Yeah, I mean, I would agree with you, but it's like everybody's taken – a page out of the playbook of a Chael Sonnen or a Conor McGregor. They see what the potential is there to, to, to make that big money, to get the big fights, you know, talk your way into a title shot, if you will. And it just seems like it's being replicated so much. And half the time, the majority of the time for that matter, it's not being replicated well. So it's, it's like, you know, I hope we can one day drop it. about anyone specific? <laughs> <laughs> uh, listen, it's, you know, say, Maybe uh, somebody else fighting on the Chicago card. I don't know. <laughs> Listen, that's uh, he's a good friend of the show. I, I won't, I won't go there. But again, it's like it, for me, it's like this catch twenty two. Like I get, I get a kick out of it. a lot of stuff that's said. It's funny. I, I, I understand talking your way into a title shot. Some of it might over be be over the line. Some of it might not be. But at the same time, like I really do wish that we could get back to the the good old days. You know. 
And, you know, I feel like Chael, like, he, like, trash-talked, but, like, he did it in a way that it was, like, it wasn't insulting. Like, it may have been trash-talked, but there was, like, a line that he just wouldn't cross, whereas, like, some other people are bringing, like, girlfriends or families or countries into this. Like, I'm like, that's... You don't need to do that, you know? Um, and I don't know. I just... I get where they're coming from. 100% I do. I just... I feel like your fighting should be exciting enough or successful enough that you shouldn't have to do that out of the cage, you know? Right, right. Well, I I, I wish we could get to a day where everybody's making enough money to where th- that doesn't need to happen at all. So yeah, that, that would be a beautiful thing. But again, on the flip side of it, it's like you look at a guy like Colby, he is in, in just over a year, he's one of the most talked about guys in the sport, getting his title shot. It's like... I feel like a lot of people, though, like, I feel like it's a, it's like, it could be a flip. Like, some people, like, people wanted to tune in to Conor McGregor to watch him win. Whereas I feel like with Colby, with some of the stuff he says, people want to tune in to see him lose. Like, so, admittedly, people are tuning in, but I don't know if it's good or it's bad. Well, well, I, he, he said it on the show many times. He knows he's playing the heel role and he's relishing that. But, you know, it's kind of like that Floyd Mayweather effect. Like, people tune in because they don't like you. They want to see you lose. So, um, again, is, is that the good way to go for your for your own career? Who's to say? But at the same time, it's like he's gotten the fights that he's been looking for so far. But anyway, you all right. You've got to you got to commit. <laughs> right, absolutely. you got to commit and be unapologetic. It's very important. But... All right, listen, Megan, you've been more than generous with your time today. Greatly appreciate it, as always. Just a couple more questions here for you. Um, no problem. We talked about getting the ex- the exposure into the mainstream earlier. How happy are you to make this debut on such an awesome card like we were just talking about? And will it be a cl- clean sweep for the Aussies on June 9th? I hope it's a, a clean sweep for the Aussies. <laughs> um <laughs> But, you know, I'm pretty grateful to be able to be given this opportunity. I guess, like, not a lot of people get to debut on the main card of, of such an amazing pay-per-view. So, I'm hugely... And, admittedly, I know that's because of, you know, Holly and the, the kind of star power that she brings. Um, I'm just grateful to be on this journey and to be experiencing this and, you know, to finally get back in the cage. And uh, can you give us a prediction, or maybe not an official prediction, but how do you visualize this fight playing out? Um... Um, I don't really have a prediction, I guess, but, you know, I, you know, me and my team, we're working hard and I have no doubt that we're going to do everything we possibly can to be able to get our hand raised on June 9th. All right. Very good. And for all the fans out there that have been supporting you throughout this layoff, what can they all expect from you in the UFC? And will we see you with a title fight against Chris Cyborg in 2018? Well, I hope so. You know, with a win on June 9th, uh, but you know that's that's what I'm focusing on right now. But you know, it you're gonna hopefully see the the same Megan. You know, I'm I I come to fight. I put on exciting fights, um, and I have a cool accent. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, you're definitely one of the one of the more marketable ones that, that that's come around in recent years, and I certainly look forward to all the future has in store for you. Greatly appreciate the time today. Very much looking forward to the fight on June 9th at UFC 225. Hopefully, we can catch up again when the fight draws near. Any shout outs or plugs you'd like to get in before we let you go? Um, I guess just thank you to my you know my coaching staff and my team here at Glory MMA and Fitness um, that stood by me through the thing. My my management. Um, Tim and Audie and the guys at uh, Paradigm Sports Management um, and uh, Engage uh, Industries, my uh, equipment and uh, equipment and athletic gear, I guess you would call it, uh, sponsor. They've you know they stood by me and um, I can't thank them enough. You know I have some of the best gear and I'm just excited to represent everyone who stood by me. Uh, throughout this whole ordeal and put on a a great performance for everyone for sure looking forward to june 9th highly anticipated debut uh again thank you very much for the time i hope you have a wonderful day my friend no problem thank you for having me all right it's been a pleasure all right guys i hope you enjoyed the conversation with megan second time having her on the show and i gotta say the first time we had her on i mispronounced her first name and i think that set a bad vibe for the remainder of the show. I could be wrong, but I'll tell you what, this second conversation was much better. Pleasure to have her on. 
Very much looking forward to this highly anticipated debut, as you heard me say there a number of times. Can't wait for her to finally walk into that octagon, fight Holly Holm, hopefully set up the fight with Chris Cyborg. And like she said, she's incredibly marketable. She'd be a great ambassador for women's MMA. Looking forward to what the future has in store for her. But let's keep it rolling. Our final guest of the evening, Hawaiian badass, UFC welterweight, set to take on our first guest, Mike Perry, at UFC 226, July 7th, in Vegas. The man himself, Yancey Medeiros. This is BJPenn.com Radio, the fighter's voice. Coming up next, Yancey Medeiros. All right, Penn Nation, please welcome back to the show UFC welterweight and a man who personifies the phrase just scrap, Hawaii's own Yancey Medeiros. Yancey, what's going on, man? How is life on the islands today? Ah, no complaints, brother. Beautiful, blue skies, nice wind, beautiful sun, beach, Hawaii's Hawaii. All right. Always a blessing. Paradise, paradise for sure, man. Paradise is paradise. It's expensive, but it's still paradise. Right. <laughs> So listen, man, it's been a while since we last had you on the show. Much to discuss, but first let's uh, start with the announcement from earlier this week that you'll be fighting Mike Perry at UFC 226 in Vegas on July 7th. I spoke with Perry last week, uh, and at that point, it, this was before the fight was announced, he was still looking at fighting uh, Emil Mech. When did, you, uh-huh. when did you get offered this fight? When did this fight get offered to you? I believe the offer came to me on Friday. Friday or Saturday, I forget specific like what day but i mean pretty much like friday saturday i got the same things going on i'm waking up in training <laughs> but what? i mean yeah i got the call i was just like no brainer yeah it's in it's in vegas you know like i feel ufc is trying to make trying to put on fights and barn burners and you know like they look at me as someone that's gonna bring a fight hence what they put me on that card and i took it well i know you posted on twitter that all you do is say yes and sign the contract obviously yeah, the- i see I seen some. I seen some people, you know, upset about it. And I'm like, hey, mad as you can be, as mad as you want at me, it ain't me. All I all I say is yes and sign the contract. All my fights, every single fight, I never chose any fighter. They gave me all of that. <clears throat> right. Well, obviously there was no hesitation to take this fight, but I'm wondering, was this the matchup that you were hoping for? I was just hoping for a, a matchup, just uh, any fight. You know, I didn't know what UFC was gonna gonna put me or what name they was gonna give me after after losing my bout you know i like just i just glad they did even mike perry because mike perry wants to take heads off and that's that's the type of fights that bring out the best the best in me when i know they're trying to knock me out because i'm gonna bring it but this i won't be less emotional towards the fight i'm gonna be much more you know i'm looking i'm looking i'm looking to do work I really show the real yancy madaris out there for sure for sure now, that, that's something I wanted to get to here in a moment. I know you were talking about uh, maybe changing things up a little bit and, and trying to really show your skills in there, but give us your thoughts on, on Mike Perry as an opponent and how do you think you guys match up stylistically? I think it's an entertaining fight. I mean, that guy comes in and steps in the cage and just wants to do one thing, knock you out. And that's as much as people may dislike his attitude or however he presents himself, hey, he, he's, he's coming in there. And he's, he's on a mission, and I respect that. But just because I respect that doesn't mean I ain't getting ready for it, all right? See, they, I'm, I'm ready. I feel like Mike Perry is the type of fighter that I could lose to if I get emotional and I get into this barn burner. Like, I can take punches. I know I can take hits, but this is this this is the fun, this is is the the business of entertainment, and you can't be taking hits all the time. It, that diminishes over the years, and, you, and you just it's about being smart and productive, man. And that's what I want to be. I want to be entertaining. But I also want longevity. <laughs> yeah, I know, and and that's kind of the tough part of uh. It's the fine you know, line between M and you know. Right, right, right. Being in this business, you want to be as entertaining as possible, but you also want that longevity, and you want to win too. So you got to find that that balance in between all of those things. But uh, you know, he's coming off back to back losses. He's eager to get back in the win column. Of course, following the loss to Cerrone, you're looking to do the same here. Again, I know we discussed this. Briefly via text, but you know it sounds to me like that that you kind of took a lesson from that loss, and you really want to focus on your skills rather than brawling too much. Does that sound accurate? Uh, pretty much. I mean, like naturally, naturally, I'm gonna go. You know, I have a lot of pride. I got, I, and I'll go toe to toe. 
and, you know, but this is this is this is not this is not who's the toughest. It's it this fight game is not about who's the toughest. I ain't over here trying to play checkers. You know, you get me one, I get you back. No, I'm trying to play chess and set you up and just take you out, put you in a checkmate. And if you notice, that's what the champions do. Max is a great example of that. You know, you might have upper, you might have advantages over him, but overall in the game plan, you ne- his IQ is always set. He's never, he's never emotional. He's always, he's a champ and he's a, gr- and he's great at what he does. And I utilize all of that too. And I just feel all my teammates, all my coaches, they know the real Yancey. And like my coaches, my coaches is like Yancey. Like you get in your last fights, like you get dropped, you get put, you get put to the mat, and they can't, they still can't take you out in jujitsu. You know what I mean? I've been rocked, dropped, put in, co- hit, you know what I mean? Dazed and confused, and these guys are still not, still can't keep me down on my ground, on my ground game, and, and and take me out. Why is that? I think I'm pretty good there. <laughs> you know, I just always want to get back up and get back to a fight, which is where I need to be more well rounded and still be able. I can take you down. I can show my 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 aggression, and I, it won't be just through my hands. It'll be my skills will be thrown from head to toe, and I feel like I'm a well well ranged fighter i'm well i'm well versed and all my coaches see that and believe that max them see it you know and it's just all my teammates see it and it's just every time i step into that cage i'm always thinking about entertaining and that gets the sometimes that gets the um it's 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 my strength and my weakness you know i feed off of it but like last time like i felt i walked right into a punch when i could have when i could have uh, when i could have slowed my pace down a little yeah, you know, you, you had a pretty killer 2017, man. You know, the, the, you had a couple of dominant wins. Of course, the fight of the year against Oliveira. That was a fight that leading into that weekend, you know, everybody's saying, oh, I'm excited for, uh, I believe it was Gaethje Alvarez. And I said, man, I bet you what steals the show is going to be uh, is gonna be Yancey and Cowboy Oliveira. But, you know, you looked really good against Cerrone up until the finish. What went wrong there, in your opinion? I think I was just pressing too hard. I felt like... I felt like oh, I, was, I was making Cerrone move back. I felt like I was keeping the pace, my pace. I was in my, you know, I didn't feel like I was getting too tired. I felt, I felt good. He got me with some good shots, but for the most part, I felt like I had the momentum of me pushing the pace, which I did. But I, that's where you know I watched my fight over and over. I said, shit, I should have slowed down a lot more than I, I felt. Just you know, like I train with, I train with a lot of guys. I have uh, even at home, like I got Max. Them, and, you know, Max is like one of my main sparring partners. But you know, even though he walks around the same weight as me, I'm not fighting at 145. So the speed, everything is just totally different. The pace, you know, what I mean, you 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 sparring a 45 fighter and then you sparring a 170 fighter. The tenacity and pace, is, the speed, everything's different. You know, I'm just glad that I got a good team that you know will make me. Give me my give me my best training, injury free, be optimal, and it's just I'm just happy. Like now, I just kind of be I gotta I gotta be I gotta be right. I gotta keep my mind strong and just stay stay on beat, stay on stay on keeping composed, man. Yeah, you know, keeping to my good plan. For sure, for sure. Now speaking of teammates, I'm wondering, did you get a chance to work with Nate at all leading up to the Cerrone fight? No, unfortunately, I I didn't get to. You know, we we um I'm I'm based out in Hawaii now, and I try and make my best to pay my homage to my Cali fam and Nick Diaz Academy and all the scrap pack. I'm still I'm still associated with them. That's still my team. I still rep them even in Hawaii. I always rep them. That's my brothers, that's family. I'm just that's why I'm just in a pretty uh a good a good spot because I can you know, I can get the best of both worlds in California and Hawaii and just right now I've been at home more. So I've been I've I've been working more with Max and all our home and all our home guys. For of this. course, of course. And the reason yeah. I ask is because you know Nate Nate put such a whooping on Cerrone that I was figuring maybe uh you know he'd have some beneficial stuff to help you with you know leading up to that fight. But um you know yeah. M- M- Mike there's pe- nothing there's, there's nothing in the fight that Nate didn't tell me personally that I didn't get put together. You know it was the same right. thing. Like he told me you know he told me some he told me some things, but it's just more real. They're real about it. Like, hey, get in there, get that motherfucker. Like <laughs> right. <laughs> I know I know what you mean. I know I, you didn't even need to say more. I know I got this. You know like right right. That, that's what it is. And yeah, I just I'm just proud and privileged to call him my brother. Yeah, you know, and, and talking about uh, the forward pressure thing, you know, Mike Perry, when I talked to him last week, he kind of had a similar opinion on his past couple fights. You know, he was saying how being that forward pressure fighter and, and always looking to put on a show for the fans, how that can kind of backfire on you sometimes. Yeah, I mean, I feel, I feel, 
you know, Mike is in there, and it's, we we're on the same. We we have the same understanding when it comes to entertaining people. Hence, why he's always trying to knock people out, and hence why I'm always blocking punches with my face. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it just we 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 in there to entertain, and we're gonna bite the bullet, and we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna dig our toes and feet in the ground, and we're gonna let you know that we're here to die. You know, I'll die. Like you know, the ref's there to save, watch for my safety. I don't give a sh- I don't give a shit about my safety. The ref got me. I will be here, and the last thing I'm gonna do is give up, give up in myself, and not put not put a show, put a, not give a, not give the fans a show. Now, he, now he, go ahead. No, now that being said, I'm gonna do that. We're taking less damage and putting out more damage. That's the plan. Right, right. So, so stay stay true to who you are, but also try to fight a little bit more intelligently in there and make sure you, you get that victory. Stay, you, you can always be you, but there's nothing wrong with making adjustments. No, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Now, uh, he had said that, that he was really, really looking to be on this card in July for International Fight Week. Clearly, he got his wish. Uh, I, I noticed that uh, you called it the Ninth Island. I take it you enjoy competing in Vegas quite a bit. Uh, I do. I do enjoy It's the closest, besides L.A., it's the closest venue that I like I like being in. It's it's an easy, it's an easy plane ride. It's easy acclimation. There's no, there's no um, elevation. You know, just... Just got to gotta acclimate to the heat, which right. isn't bad because Hawaii's humid. I don't mind dry heat at all. Right. And it's a nice change yeah. going from humidity to, to dry heat, right? Oh, hell yeah. Dude, I am not even sweating. I'm like, y'all hot. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the, the UFC usually goes all out for International Fight Week, man. How pumped are you to be on this card? I'm pumped. I'm pumped, man. I'm very, I'm very happy to just get back I, I came home i wasn't i took a little vacay after my fight you know went to thailand i just came home i was like shit i want to keep doing that for the rest of my life i gotta get back to work and i've just been in a i've been in a good spot and i got this notice and i'm like damn all right they want to put me on international fight week that's what's up and i just came from a main event that i lost and i didn't come through but they still want to invest and in, and you know make me an asset and put me on these cards where they can get me great promotion great publicity and build my name build my brand I'm glad that UFC is letting me do that. Right, that lends itself to the style of fighter you are, and and how much not only that they believe in you, but you know the the kind of asset you are to the company in regards to your fighting style, what you bring to the table uh, for all the fans out there. That that's got to be pretty cool to to see that kind of recognition from the company. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is. I mean, you just I want to be making I want to be making more money, you know. But what I gotta do is win fights before I start. Before I start demanding, so I feel every fighter could get paid more, not just me. But oh, for sure. You know, that's, yeah, we ain't, we ain't, we. Who am I to, who to complain? As soon as I complain, they be like, Yancy, who the fuck are you? <laughs> you know, get the fuck out of here. You know, you know, shut up. I'll, I'll find, I'll find a one seventy and I'll fight for eight grand and pour all his heart and soul into this fight. You know what I mean? It's just like I understand that it's a business. So whatever cards is played in front of me. The good, the good gambler and the good player is gonna make it work, regardless of what he had, the hand he has. Yeah, and it's just you take care of the company, you, they're gonna take care of you. So yeah, and at yeah. the same at the same time, I know what you're saying, man. But uh, but I agree with you. I wish that all you guys got paid significantly more for what you do. You go out there, put your health on the line. I hope that one day we can get to the point where everybody's living comfortably, even on the undercard, the fight pass prelims. You're getting a good chunk of change to go out there and compete. Yeah, it's like. You know what I mean? Like, there's, like, Odell Beckham, them just making spectacular catches. They're getting paid thousands and millions of dollars just for that catch. And I'm catching punches in my face over 10 hard ones, you know, dropping to the floor. And I'm getting paid less than 100000 That's even if I win. Right. <laughs> like, you, you know what I mean? It's just, there's just so much, like, you know, like, there's 12, there, there's, there's 22 pe- people playing on the field during that. There's only two people getting publicized when we fight. How are we not getting more money for that? Right, right. <laughs> you know no, I, like, oh, there's 22 people in there working, and they all getting paid hell of money. Now we're getting two people in an octagon with the cameras on every single angle on you. You're taking all these damage. How are we not getting paid just as much as these football players? <laughs> I know it, man. I know it. I th- I've talked about and we it. Don't, and we don't, we don't got seasons. Fighters don't got seasons. There ain't no off-season, on-season um, fight camp, you know, if you're in a real fight and that's your life, you training every time and you're going to be ready. Like, I say fight camp because I'm getting ready for a fight, but fight camp is all the way true. There ain't no on and off season. 
for martial artists. Right. This is a year-round job, and, and to evolve as a martial artist, you have to be doing that year-round. You can't take that time off, or, or else, you know, things will slip by, and, and it'll show in your next performance. Yep, yep. And there's just hella hungry people out there waiting for their shot, and they're going to take that moment with every opportunity they have, man. That's what I'm doing in my career. I'm watching for the people in front of me, and I'm watching the people behind me. Because I'm going to keep moving forward. Right, right. You, know, and he, you ain't passing me, but I'm going to pass you. Right. Well, yeah. I, know, I know, you know, t- talking about uh, becoming an asset to the company and, and things like that, uh, when I think of this card, this uh, International Fight Week, if we're lucky, you know, pray to the MMA gods, maybe they'll put your brother in battle, Max Holloway, on the card as well. I know you guys would love to, you know, put on some Hawaiian-style beatdowns in Vegas together. Oh, most definitely. Uh, yes, that would that would tip everything off. Like, that's just perfect. And, you know, Max is hungry, he's healthy, he's cleared. So he's just looking, they're looking for a negotiation to see where, where he wants to, um, when he can defend his belt. I just know that he wants to defend it soon. I know that. They, you know, he just made a weight cut. They made him stop cutting weight. He's pissed off about that. So he just went right back into training, full on. Like, you know, he's just ready, ready to defend that strap. And it, it'd be great. You know, I don't see how you can't bring the Hawaiian champ to the Ninth Island. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. You know, speaking of Max, you know, how much of a badass he is for, for taking that fight, trying to save UFC 223. Obviously, it's a bummer that the commission wouldn't clear him, but, you know, he got all the love love and support from the MMA community for, for attempting to, to save the card. Uh, that's, that's inspirational, bro. Like, everyone's like, oh, wow, you was injured for Frankie Edgar. You know what I mean? Like, you never fight, whatnot. And I'm like, yeah, the doctor cleared him. As soon as he got cleared from the doctor, he got this notice, and he said yes. And from what I remember, Max told me, that he, Max told every, the world that he's trying to make a legacy. And how he, that's, you telling me that's not making moves to, you know what I mean? Like, that's a champ, that's money moves. That's not money moves, that's a legacy move, I mean. You know what I mean? Like, how are you going to just get cleared from the doctor and take a world championship fight in six days? Because, you know, he feels that he can because he feels he's the best. Right. And he always is ready. Like, it wasn't a fluke. And I'm telling you, Max would have Max would have made that weight if the commission didn't stop him. He's set on that. You know, like, that, that's why he's a champion. Like, bro, Max walks around the same weight as me. We, we, I walk around at 190. He makes it to 145. That is a champion. You know what I mean? That just on that, then not alone. That takes that takes champion status, heart, mind, emotion. You know, it's just, I'm great. It's great that I can be there right by his side, learning from him. Right, incredible, take, incredible, take incredible ded- dedication it takes to cut that amount of weight into and, and to fight well and have a great performance. So I agree with yeah. you 100 percent there. But you know, yeah. w- what did you make of this whole situation leading up to that fight with with Connor and all the drama that went down? What was your take on that? Oh, man, just, gosh, cocaine's a hell of a drug, bro. <laughs> nah, I don't know, man. It's just like, I don't know who would rage. Like, for me, it's like, bro, if I go, if I go take somebody out, I ain't going to make a scene. That guy's going to get assassinated. You know what I mean? The last thing I can do is have cameras around me if I try and really take somebody out, you know, and get and get to them. Like, I'm like, come on, bro. Conor McGregor is an icon to the world. Everybody knows him. He walks out of his house, there's paparazzi. You know what I mean? Like, bro. You over here raging, throwing dollies at fucking trucks, hurting other fighters. Like, I understand you trying to get to that guy, but all the all the rest of that shit was unnecessary. Right, right. And, and it's just like I seen the video. I was like, "Fuck, this guy gotta be high." And I didn't even know it was Connor. You know what I mean? I just, I just, I just was watching the video. I didn't even read the captions or anything. Right? He's like, "Oh, breaking news." I'm watching it on Instagram. I'm like, "What the hell?" Wow, it's Connor. Like, like, what is this guy doing? You know what I mean? It's like, bro, you gotta be high. Like, <laughs> right, right. But I, I don't want to. I don't want to put any bad, you know, bad, bad thing, bad like vibes or talk shit about the situation. That's just fucking me being Yancey. Oh, it's fucking high as fuck, you know. But I'm glad like everyone's okay. Mike got hurt, but you know, there's progression. It's nothing, nothing major. It's a, it's an unfortunate thing, and it's like seeing that. I'm like, I don't think. I don't think Hawaii could ever fight. Uh, I don't think I, um, Ireland could ever come to Hawaii and fight. There would be way more fights outside the octagon than in the octagon. Right, right. Well, I know. Man, if, if that shit happened in Hawaii, I'm telling you, the security guards would not let that happen. 
Right. <laughs> Our security guards down here would be jumping you. Pull, 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 pull. Beat you up in the beat you up in the facility and throw you outside on the road. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> we just got different we got different We got pride. We got you know what I mean? There's politicalness and, and we gotta be professional in a job, but sometimes people will break well you break, you touch their pride or you, you try to hurt them, they're gonna you know, locals they they, they bite down now. <laughs> yeah, and so and sometimes you got to defend that honor, but you, you know, surprisingly for me, Nate defended him uh, on uh, Twitter, saying that you know Khabib should expect something like that for what he did to Artem. But you know, Megan Anderson was was just telling me that she thinks Connor has become too big and, and too out of control for the comp- for the company to handle. Uh, would you agree with that at all? I will agree with that. For one fifty five, is Connor in there? I would definitely agree with that because they kind of control him a look. He still calls the ruckus and he still got a title fight afterwards. Why? Because he bring the money. Right. <laughs> you know what they mean? Like if they, if, you know, and even when, even when you, you seem like, well, I think if I did that, fucking Dana White then would be like, this fucker is out of here. He's never fighting in UFC ever again. You know, so and so. And I believe that's what happened to me, but he didn't state that in his, in his statement. He just mm-hmm. said it was a bad move on his career. Right. And it's funny. It's it's funny how Dana went from super upset the first day, and then you slowly watch his statements kind of backtrack. Like, okay, yeah, he's our he's our cash cow. We gotta kind of, you know, take this a, a a little bit differently than we would if, yeah, like you said, say any other guy did something similar. Yeah. So it's so, so, I mean, like, if if Conor McGregor, Conor McGregor gets that next fight, I'm just gonna feel like that was all a hoax. <laughs> Whatever right. you know what I mean, like, bro, I was all on show so he could get where he needed to be again. Because regardless of however you thought he looked, that guy just got more publicity. Regardless, you know what I mean. He got more publicity from doing that. He's probably making more money now because he got more people on him looking at him. They like, just right, and just it, that type. and he yeah. also did the card a favor too, right? I mean, with all the stuff that went down, everybody's like, oh man, Khabib versus Iaquinta. I'm not sure, yeah. but that, then you hear all the stuff that happened. I think it generated a lot more interest for the card as well. Yeah, most most definitely. I mean, that, that's the most drama I've ever seen. Yeah, you know, crazy. Like, see, but it's just, I'm just glad I wasn't in it. Like, I'm over here trying to fucking fight and get this <laughs> right. job over with. You know, it's keep spreading that law of spirit. Right, right. <laughs> now, vibes, you know, speaking of Nate and what he had said, uh, just, just to stick with the Diaz brothers here for a moment. Yeah. Nick's Nick's suspension ends on 420. Ironically enough, um, uh, obviously that was pretty comical when that news came out. But do you think the UFC is going to make him the right offer to get him back in the cage? And who would you like to see him fight if that deal gets done? Um, I'm, Nick is by far the general. In Nick Diaz Academy. We all look up to him, and you know, as far as I as far as I know, Nick, if he if if he if he wants to fight. He's gonna fight. That's the thing, and I don't know. I don't know if that's something he wants right now, or if, he, if he's hungry. I haven't talked to him. I haven't talked to him for a while. You know, just because he's on his own. He, he's doing his own thing right now. I'm trying to. I'm trying to get to his status and you know get get big and you know make my money and do what I gotta do to get out there. So I just feel like whoever they put against Nick, the hotter guy, it's it's a win for him because right. Nick is Nick is mainstream. You know I mean, that guy could go right. In the, well, how long has he fought? Four years? Four years it's now? It's been a while. Yeah, it's been a long yeah, time. Yeah, four years, right? I bet you he pull a main and still sell seats. Sell out seats. Right. You put him on the main. That's how relevant he is in this MMA game. And it's just, I haven't personally talked to him, but just if Nick's, whatever Nick does, he's great at it. Whatever it is, if he puts his heart, his mind, and soul into it, he's top notch, one of the best in it. We come to jujitsu, comes to boxing, what, what, whatever it is, man. He's so good at, at keeping to that triathletes, even partying if you wanted to. You can't right. drink Nick. <laughs> you make you go to sleep, bro. The first time I ever got drunk, blacked out was in Nick. He freaking <laughs> Jedi mind. He Jedi mind tricked me, man. I swear. I was like, I was just like, he just kept passing me Jameson. Poop, poop, poop. Next thing I know, I woke up in the shower naked. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, that's 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 how that that's how much mental power that Diaz has on everyone like you know just because people can't understand him but I think he's so smart that guy is way beyond in knowledge he's way beyond his time when it comes to understanding shit and people just have to know how to understand him and relate with him then you know he's a genius for he's sure just, for sure and I think yeah. I think that he and Nate have have been pretty genius and the way they've been approaching this game you know since uh 
you know, since all this pay stuff has come up, you know, I think they're very wise to play hardball, get what they deserve. But at the same time, you know, being a huge fan of theirs, it's like, man, I really hope the UFC can come to an agreement with him and get him back in the cage sooner rather than later. Yeah, no, most definitely. They they are they are they're not only entertaining, they're martial artists. You know, Absolutely. they're not just entertainers, they're martial artists and that's like one thing I always gonna respect about respect about the Diaz boys. Like Nate Nick, they always open up the house to me, you know, whenever I'm whenever I'm in California and Nick put it to me straight. He's like, Yeah, it's how much I did karate, right? Like from when I was a kid and he's like, Yeah, it's how much years you did karate? I'm like 15 years like 5 to 20 then i started mma he's like that's 15 years nobody can take away from you and it fucking just like it was like just something hit in my head you're like you're damn right that's right you know what i mean i don't care how much i got 15 years of knowledge that i need to utilize you know what i mean and make that makes me a martial artist and like that just clicked and you know like i always i always just paid homage to him for for telling me that kind of shit and just bringing me back to being a martial artist in there not a fight not 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 just a fighter and not just an athlete, you know, and that's how, if you notice, like, that's how, that's how Nick and Nate them will lose a bout when the guy's just being an athlete and not, and trying to win rounds, not fight. There's a difference between trying to fight you and trying to win a round. That's a huge difference. For sure. You know, that, For sure. That, and that's it. So I think, like, people that fight Nick and Nate or the Diaz guys, they just have to win the rounds. That's their plan because you can't fight them. They're going to make you fight them and you're going to lose that. You're going to lose that battle. Anybody that tries to actually fight them, stay in their game with, you know what I mean? Like, they're going to, that, that, that's, that's where they're, that's their strength, man. Right? That's why they're martial artists, because they can keep that composure in that fire. You know, they'll get, look, look at the Nate and Cerrone fight, right? It's like crazy. Everything's going off, dropping each other, left and right, tripping them. In the last round, Nate's like, F, you, you know, he's, he's full of, he's full of energy. Like, he never lost anything. Because because he's that's how smart their IQ is. They ain't trying to. They ain't athletes. Right. It's not how you start. It's how you finish. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. And you're and you're and you're completely correct with the with the martial artist stance on it. It's like you know if you're gonna point fight and and do the athlete route. Yeah, sure, you might get the win, but at the end of the day, if you're actually gonna go out there and scrap, you're gonna have a hell of a time. So, but you know, you kind of segued segued back into yourself perfectly here. You know, talking about. Nate saying that, you know, you can't, or Nick rather saying that you can't take away those 15 years of karate. Um, yeah. You know, you get back in the win column against Perry in July. Does that set you back up for a ranked opponent, in your opinion? Uh, honestly, like, I I want to get to the top. That's always, that's always, you know, gold. Gold is always the, the, the mission. If you ain't trying to get gold, get the fuck out of this career. If you ain't trying to be the best, like, what are you doing here? Right. You know what I mean? Like, I ain't going to be no stepping stone. That ain't fucking what I trying to fight for. You know, I don't want to be, well, oh, this guy's a stepping stone to get to the next caliber. No. I want them to be like, fuck, you fighting Yancey shit. It's going to be a war. Right. You know, like, what, what, you know what I mean? And that, that being said, it's just, yeah, like, just total, that's just how it is, bro. <laughs> so, what's the rest of the year going to look like for you? How many fights do you think you can get in between July and the end of 2018? I would like to get four fights in. I have two more after this. That would be nice. You know, it'd be that would be that would be. I would like. That's my plan at least. But you know, so once I, I uh, last year, um, I fought in July, and then I fought in December. You know, it's not. It was. It wasn't. It wasn't like it was a big break. It, I fought July, and then prior to fighting in July or June, excuse me, in Brazil, I fought September of two thousand and six. And that's me. And I was ready. Like, I wasn't, like, injured or anything. It's just, you know, the matchmakers were trying to make a good match, matchup and whatnot. Yeah, that's the tough part, too, right? It takes two to tango. If there's nobody out there that's willing to scrap with you, you got to sit back and wait for that guy to sign, right? Yeah. Yeah, and that's the thing. Like, I think I think now, like, the top ten guys, you know, especially the top ten, they get picky. They get picky with who they want to fight because you make yourself go to the top ten. Who wants to go and fight a 20, a 20 or a 25-er and lose their position? If you're in the top ten, like that's like that's not worth it to them. You know what I mean? They're like, fuck, give me somebody that's gonna make me rank up, not give me somebody that's you know way back there. And I, I think that's why it's the top ten guys always just fluctuate like that and doesn't really you know from the top twenty guys they don't come in and change or they don't. It's hard for guys to break into that top ten that aren't just re- cycling through. Right, and 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 at the same time, man, like while I get what you're saying, I agree with you. I've talked to plenty of fighters that feel the same way, but. At the same time, it's like when do you 
when do you finally give that guy the opportunity that you were afforded to get there in the first place, you know? Oh, I, that's other fighters. That ain't me. From what I know, Mike Perry lost two fights. I just lost one. I came from a three. I'm I, I'm in a bigger seat than him, but that's a fight. Right. That's entertainment. Who doesn't want to? Who doesn't want to see that happen? You know what I mean? Only the guy that wanted to fight Mike doesn't want to see this. But I mean, in general, like fans want to see that. They know what Mike is capable of doing. They know what I'm capable of doing. That's just pure entertainment. That's all it is. And I'm glad that that UFC sees that because they could have given Mike Perry anybody. They right. gave me anybody, you know. What I mean, why? But why did they put me and Mike Perry on July seventh International Fight Week? Because <laughs> they want a fight. Because they want entertainment. And, and I think that's what they see in me. I feel like that's what they know. I feel like I bring that. I bring that to the crowd. I bring that to my company. You certainly do, man. You certainly do. And like you said, they wanted a good fight for International Fight Week. It doesn't get much better than you and Mike Perry throwing down on oh. July seventh. So. And I seen the other, I seen the other fights getting booked too. It's stacked. It's getting stacked, right? It's good fights. I like them. Yeah, so far, so. I hope I fight early so I can watch the rest. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Not too early though. You want to get that pay per view money on the main card, right? Ah, uh, no, only the champs get pay per view, bro. Oh yeah, true, true. Tri- pay per view yeah, points, right, like, right. Put me anyway. Since since the whole Reebok thing came in, I don't care where I get paid. Keep put me in early. Right. My sponsors, you know, I, I got no advertisement to get paid better, so just put me in that I can get the fight over with. Right. Enjoy the rest of the night. So. Yeah, yeah. Listen, man, always a pleasure to speak with you. You've been more than generous with your time. Greatly, greatly appreciate it. Uh, in conclusion, what can all the fans out there expect when you go to war on July 7th? Uh, will there be a new and approved Yancey with a little bit more patience or that same old Hawaiian warrior that everybody loves? You're gonna see a smart Hawaiian warrior. A very yeah, that my 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 plan. What I want to work on is showing the world what everyone sees in whole, in the gym. That that Yancey. I feel like I'm a well-rounded, complete fighter, and I need to show that July seventh. And that's the plan, bro. They're gonna see a complete Yancey Madaris from stand up. If it goes to the ground, it goes to the ground. But you know, that's 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 my plan. I'm I I, I know Mike Perry's got a lot got got weapons. That I have to watch out for, but the plan is to make the best Yancy Maders and just totally reveal, reveal to the world that I am a full, uh, I am an entertaining, full ranged variety fighter. <laughs> right. Well, listen, man, I'm certainly looking forward to it. I have no doubt that you'll be able to go out there and put on a great performance as you usually do. Uh, hopefully, we can catch up again when the when the fight gets a little closer. Again, man, I greatly appreciate the time tonight. Always a pleasure to speak with you. Any shout-outs or uh, sponsor plugs you'd like to get in before we let you go? Uh, it's just simple. Buddy, all the support. Jason, you guys having me here. Uh, Ruka, Ruka on it. Uh, virus. Uh, on the coffee. I got a bunch. Of, man, my bad, man. Uh, just all my teammates, everybody. But thank you. Mahalo for having me. I always make time for you, Jason. All my right. M- much love, brother. Uh, looking forward to the return. Much love from everybody on Team Penn as well. Mahalo to you, yeah. and, and you have a great afternoon, my man. Thank you, brother. Hello. All right, bro. Later. All right, Penn Nation. That's it for us this week. Make sure you tune in to the next show for more great conversations with more of the best athletes in this business. Pleasure to be here with you each and every week. BJPenn.com, Radio the Fighter's Voice. On behalf of the whole team, big thanks to everybody. Make sure you guys follow us on social media, set up alerts, set up notifications, get that breaking news as it breaks. And again, I hope you guys can join us next week for the next episode. The Fighter's Voice, baby. BJPenn.com radio. We'll catch you guys next time. Peace out, everybody.